Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Today I have for you the recreation of a piece of pattern paper and this whole project is called Forgery on the 4th and it's a project hosted by the Counterfeit Kit Challenge group which I am on the design team for. And so here is the inspiration piece that I am going to forge. And I love the colors and flow of this piece and I'm going to use my watercolors to forge it. I love to watercolor. If you've been here for a while, you probably have seen me do watercoloring in the past. Now I am recreating this piece on a sheet of 9 by 12 watercolor paper instead of 12 by 12. And that's because I am trying to move into using this higher quality brand of watercolor paper, but because it is pricey, I only have this size in my stash right now. Perhaps at some point, if I learn how to use this paper correctly, then I will be able to add other sizes to my project. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the pieces from my counterfeit kit that I built recently, and that video is up on my um YouTube channel so you can go check that out and I will leave links for you. Now these little embellishment pieces were what I used to determine my color palette for my whole kit and in there I've got some dark pinks, some light pinks, some aquas and some navies and so I am going to try with my watercolor palette to recreate those colors as best I can and you'll see me you probably noticed at one moment that I was working on the back of the sheet and I am doing that to test out my colors before I move on now one thing to know about watercolors is that they dry back what that means is the color that you see when they're wet will not be the final color they will lighten up as they dry and here you can see I flipped my paper over to um, do color swatching and color samples. Now that lighter pink color I made with a mix of colors that were in the dark pink, but I watered it way down. So the thing about watercolor is if you add more water to it, you get a lighter shade. And then while this piece is still wet, I am adding in more strokes of color here and there and you have to be a little bit careful about that because if your piece has started to dry too much when you add in those strokes it will really push the pigment around and leave kind of these feathery edges with a much lighter center and I will show that to you a little bit late a little bit later in the video where I did make that mistake and I do go back and correct it a little bit so next I'm mixing up this kind of pink gray shade and there was that kind of grayish shade in the inspiration piece. Mine ended up being a little more to the brown side and that's just, um, I'm learning. <laughs> so I like to show you the things that I think work well and the things that I still need to work on so that you can see someone who is in the process of learning a skill. Um, because we have so much inspiration out there that's all about people who already know what they're doing, I like to try and share the realness of learning a skill with you. So next up I have got this um, navy section and now this didn't turn out quite as dark as I had wanted. I, I probably could have added a little more um, of another shade of paint that is called. <laughs> it is escaping me right now. At any rate, I, I could have darkened up that shade and I didn't get to it. So I am just going to leave it as it is and move on. And here I'm doing another color swatch sample on the back and I'm trying to create that aqua color. And I'm getting closer, but I need to add more water to, um, to dilute it down to get a lighter shade there. And so now I've got that aqua color going on and that's making me happy. And again, I am overlapping... Um, bits and pieces of the other colors as I go. Now mostly when I'm overlapping um, those layers are dry and you will get a, a darker tone or a different tone because watercolors are for the most part they're transparent and you will get various shades showing through. So you can see where I added that aqua over the dark blue I do have another kind of third shade going on there. And then uh, as I got to towards the end of this piece, I had used all the, in color, all the colors I had intended to use. So I decided with that last section of my paper, um, I had room for more yellow. So I had to mix up more yellow. 
Just now I added in some strokes to that green or that aqua and that's the mistake I mentioned earlier because the paint was partially dry when I added stuff to it it started to do these what's called blooms with the feathered edges and the lighter centers and I didn't really want that look for this piece so I am going to repaint over the entire strip of that color and that's going to reactivate the paint that's already there. It's going to smooth it out and create more of an even tone. Now while I am adding paint strokes to get different colored streaks in this piece, I didn't want those blooms to happen because they have jagged uneven edges and I didn't want that look in here. So I am going back in and adding a little bit more of pink layers in here so that I can get more, more color tone in here and get some different variety. So that wraps up my forgery on the 4th for this time around. I hope you enjoyed watching me um, play with watercolor paints. And hopefully if you're new to watercolor paints, you possibly picked up a few little tips along the way. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a message in the comments because I will get back to you. I will be back on Friday with my Feature Friday series where I take one crafty product and show at least 10 ways to use it. So do join me then.